This guy is 45 years old and this guy is 54. How do they do it? A long-lived mice seems very happy. If you're a mouse, you're a lucky creature because there are lots of ways to extend your lifespan. Between 1900 and 2020, human life expectancy more than doubled to 73 years. This allowed people to live fuller lives and spend more time with their loved ones. At the same time, that remarkable gain has come at a cost and it can be seen with staggering chronic and degenerative diseases. Living a long life isn't always a good thing. Not only do we outlive many people dearest to our hearts, but in this day and age, it means living with pain. For some people, it's hard to imagine that anyone wants to live that long, especially if it means years of debility and feeling like you're burdening someone. But according to researchers, the work of artificial intelligence, big data, cellular reprogramming, and an increasing understanding of the molecules that keep our bodies humming may provide unimaginable riches. One of the main concerns is that anti-aging technology may be used to reverse aging beyond what is considered natural or healthy. Now, some worry that this could lead to a society where only the wealthy can afford to live longer, creating an even greater inequality. Additionally, there are concerns about the ethical implications of extending human lifespan and even more so with reversing it. The first method we're going to talk about is telomere extension. Telomeres act like helmets to our DNA cells so they are protected. It's considered an extreme anti-aging technique because it involves making the caps longer. Now, our cells are always dividing and telomeres naturally shorten with each cell division. By the time they reach a critical length, the cell stops dividing or dies, which then starts showing up as aging in and on the human body. By extending these caps, however, researchers are aiming to not just slow aging down, but to reverse it. Hyperbaric oxygen chambers is one method used. Now, a study with 35 people 64 years of age and older had increased pressure and in oxygen received via these chambers. After receiving it 60 times over 90 days, it actually caused cellular regeneration to occur. The telomeres had increased by 38%. Now, 35 subjects is not a large number, so the results aren't that significant, but repeated studies that have the same outcomes mean more credible data in the future and for us to follow. Now, one more person who has experimented on herself is Liz Parrish, founder of BioViva, a biotech company. Now, Parrish reportedly traveled to an unlicensed clinic in Bogota, Colombia to receive an experimental gene therapy that had not yet been approved by the FDA in the United States. Before the treatment, her biomarkers indicated that her biological age was 66 years old, which was actually 22 years more than her chronological age. However, after the treatment, her reported biological age fell to match her actual age. And after repeating the treatment in 2020, she reports that since 2015, her biological age has declined by an average of five years every year. It dropped sharply again after the second treatment and is now below 25 years old, according to her. Now, telomere scores, in fact, indicated that Parrish had slowed a cellular process that many scientists believe to be one of the root causes of aging. But it's important to note that there is no reliable evidence of Parrish's perpetrated 20-year reduction in biological age, and the organizations that undertook the verification have not released any data. But before we keep going, hi, my name is Kim and welcome to The Green Lab Coat. If you enjoy living a healthy lifestyle backed by science, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button to help the algorithm and the bell to save the world one human and animal at a time. Let's get started. The next extreme case is gene therapy and modification. Rather than this being about vanity, gene therapy aims to treat or prevent disease by correcting the underlying genetic problem and replaces cells with new ones. However, there has been instances where gene therapy has gone wrong, leading to unintentional consequences. There's also been good things that have came out of this, but we will get to that later. Now, in 1999, Jesse Gelsinger, an 18-year-old participant in a gene therapy trial, died due to severe immune response triggered by the genetically engineered virus used in the treatment. While he was living with a rare liver disease called OTC, he joined a clinical trial to help infants born with it. Now, when he was injected with this concoction carrying a corrected gene, it led to multiple organ failure and he passed away four days later. The two doctors came to us and said, um, Jesse's vitals are all failing. 
and we recommend that we shut off life support for him because he's showing no brain activity. And I think, oh, God. I thought they were telling me everything that was going on, but they were They killed animals in the preclinical work. It wasn't in the consent form. Everybody failed Jesse, even me. My kid paid the ultimate price. Now, this goes to show that some people are at a high risk and would be better off staying away. Additionally, a team of London-based scientists used the popular gene editing technique CRISPR, or C-R-I-S-P-R, to genetically modify human embryos with deeply alarming results. The embryos, none of which were grown past 14 days of maturity, showed a variety of unintended edits to their genes that researchers say could lead to birth defects or even cancer later in life. The scientists attempted to edit out a protein involved in the self-renewal of embryonic stem cells. You see, the thing about gene editing is one must be very, very careful. Another professor warned them to, quote, stay the living daylights away from embryo editing, unquote. And even if gene editing technology becomes predictable and safe, the idea of wealthy parents being able to buy genetically enhanced offspring represents an ethical minefield, but that's a video for another day as we're just sticking to anti-aging in this video. Following up with that involves a method that capitalizes on those most determined to look young. Young blood transfusions, also known as parabiosis, was being conducted in a Silicon Valley startup named Ambrosia. Now, this involved young people donating their blood in exchange for money, and Ambrosia would then sell it to those who were most affluent as the price tag was lavish. Upon hearing about this, rather than it being an odd idea, people were interested and it became a little bit of an obsession to the elite. Customers ranged from 35 to 92 years old and billionaires like co-founder of PayPal Peter Thiel were interested. Now, in hindsight, blood transfusion studies had been conducted on mice decades ago. And although older rats had internal organs that reversed a bit in aging, it hasn't been proven in humans and the rats didn't look any younger on the outside, which is what a lot of people are really aiming to do. Now, other studies of this kind have ended in tragedies and even death. In 2019, the FDA shut this operation down as no significant benefits had been proven and the risks weren't worth it. The company had reopened its business after the first warning, selling plasma from donors aged 16 to 25 but it ultimately shut down and dissolved as this was part of a crackdown on companies making false claims about young blood. Now, this goes to show that when certain people wanna believe something, they will. That said, we can't talk about blood transfusions without talking about Brian Johnson, the founder of Venmo. Project Blueprint is Johnson's new venture where he currently spends $2 million per year on trying to crack the code of aging. And who else to be the better guinea pig than Johnson himself? While an extreme anti-aging routine is practiced on a daily basis by him that involves all the measuring and youth machines that you can think of, Johnson's method involves receiving blood from his son and then giving his own blood to his dad, in a process that sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel. Now, Johnson has been doing this for months, although he first started with plasma from an anonymous donor. As stated earlier, along with the plasma infusions, he has tailored his eating, sleeping, and exercise habits to reach the peak human condition. Now, Johnson's medical team has approved the transfusions and he is closely measuring his blood, brain, and organ performance. Johnson also takes 61 pills a day and eats 70 pounds of vegetables per month to stay young. Now, Johnson claims that this is the happiest he's ever been, but Johnson's medical team has admitted that they have not achieved any remarkable results and Johnson's gains have been small and reasonable. Now, experts have pointed out that lifestyle factors, such as exercise and healthy eating, play a major role in how we age, and Johnson runs the risk of bloodborne infections, fever, and allergic reactions. By far the most extreme method of anti-aging is cryonic preservation, where the idea is to bring a person back to life after doctors have declared legal death. Uh, the one in the middle is uh, by far our youngest patient, not quite three years old a little girl from Thailand who had brain cancer. Both her parents were doctors and she had multiple brain surgeries and nothing worked, unfortunately. So they contacted us. Um, because they were actually medical professionals, they actually set up an operating room in Thailand and we could send a team out there and do the procedure we'd normally do locally. Now, the process involves assessing the major blood vessels of the heart, 
draining all of the blood and then replacing it with the creoprotectant solution, which is basically an antifreeze, if you will. Now, this causes the cells to be held in place without any damage, allowing the body temperature to drop to negative 195 degrees for ages. Now, it's not freezing per se, but it's definitely preserving. Now, the hope is that the bodies will be revived in the future when medical technology has advanced enough to cure the underlying cause of death. And as of now, around 500 people have undergone cryonic preservation, mostly all in the US. The most interesting thing is that half of these recipients choose not to freeze their body, but just the brain instead, as if it couldn't be more out there. It makes sense for bodies that are more up there in age and feel their bodies won't be capable if brought back to life. Now, the skepticism is understandable as the concept is so foreign. People wonder what would happen if the power goes out in these facilities, but because no energy is needed, the tanks would only need liquid nitrogen one time a week and the temperature stays low. While the treatment comes at a hefty price of eighty to $200,000, most costs are covered by life insurance and treatments are even available for pets as well. At the moment, 90 pets are being stored in Scottsdale, Arizona, and around 1,300 people are on the waiting list. And according to employees, there's two things that awaiting clients seem to have in common. One, they're highly educated as it obviously takes some knowledge and trust in this field and in this kind of thing. And two, they seem to have a sense of adventure as the thought of coming back in the future seems to excite them. Now, the best candidates are those who still have a few good years ahead of them. Although this has little to do with wanting to be youthful, the most beneficial thing about it is it can tackle disease. But because there's no proof that this will work, it is definitely a gamble. Despite these concerns, many researchers believe that anti-aging technology has the potential to revolutionize healthcare and improve quality of life for people all around the world. Now, going back to gene editing, which really just means adding more cells, David Sinclair, a professor of genetics at Harvard University, may have found the most promising breakthrough. Our DNA acts almost like a disc, and with any disc, you have to keep it smooth and smudge-free, so when scratches begin appearing on it, it loses the ability to read accurately, and this is basically what happens when we get older. This reader is Sinclair's greatest discovery. You see, the scratches on our DNA are really a result of the reader not being as affected, not because the scratches are actually there. This reader is also responsible for turning our cells on and off, and that process of inefficacy can be triggered by pollution, environmental toxins, and human behaviors like smoking, inflammatory diet, or chronic lack of sleep. Now, what Sinclair and his team did was find a way to get those scratches off the reader so it reads better. Now, in a study done on blind mice, he was able to restore the optic nerve cells. He turned on three genes using an injection and an antibiotic, and the mice got the majority of their vision back. Apparently, it doesn't matter if the body is 50 or 75, healthy or wrecked with disease. According to Sinclair, once that process has been triggered, the body will then remember how to regenerate and will be young again. Sinclair is trying to find a way to deliver the genetic switch evenly to each cell, that way he can rejuvenate the entire mouse. Now, I also want to point out that at 53 years of age, Sinclair claims that his biological age is a decade younger than his actual age. Some even say he looks two decades younger. And I couldn't find if he's tested his mouse theories on himself, but he has said that his at-home test, Tally Health, measures biological age and provides personalized recommendations for healthy aging. While his method may provide solutions in the future, this test seems promising and available now. All in all, a lot more studies need to be done. Which side are you on? Are you conflicted and find the whole thing a bit unethical and going against nature and how we're meant to really live out our lives? Or do you think this is simply a part of the process and believe that mistakes need to happen in order to come out with better systems and inventions? Now, there's also the issue with population control. By slowing down everyone's age, that means that there would be even more people than there are right now. Now, are these researchers a little bit bizarre or is this effective as long as it's being used for health purposes and not vanity? Let me know down in the comment section below.